Ciudad de Mexico, Mexico City. This summer, I finally got to visit this impressive city. Mexico City has been high on my list of places to visit, and I was not disappointed. There's so much to appreciate. Delicious food wherever you go, reminders of the city's rich history everywhere. Really, there are just Aztec ruins on display in the middle of the street and in subway stations. And of course, any trip is special when you're accompanied by some of the greatest travel YouTubers around, but something about this city just captivated me. This is where millions of people live, work, study, and play. And I mean millions. Mexico City is the largest city of North America, with a population of over 9 million in the city proper and over 20 million when you include the surrounding region. The sheer size of the urban area stunned me. The higher up you go, the more you are confronted with the never-ending sprawl. A metropolis like this needs a good transportation system, and Mexico City has it. My main mission in the Mexican capital was to ride as much of the public transportation as we could, and I'm proud to say we did a lot. Trains, buses, cable cars. Over the next few months, all of these will be featured in in-depth videos right here on the channel. I will be sharing the first video this Saturday, and I can't wait. So then, what's this video? Well, the transit system in Mexico City is a complex web of different modes, each performing its own essential role in moving the people of the city. But it may be a bit overwhelming to somebody who's not familiar with it. So in this video, I give a quick and general overview of the different modes as a backdrop for the more detailed videos that are to come. When I publish a video of a particular mode, I'll refer back to this video so you can see how that mode fits into the larger system. Today I will include basic information like how much each mode costs and how to pay for it. Most transit in the city can be paid for using this, an integrated mobility card. These are available at some metro stations and at most bus rapid transit stations. They are reloadable, but they're not accepted everywhere, so I will tell you when they are and when they are not. Anyway, if this video is helpful to you, then please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome and stay tuned for more videos. Now without further ado, let's dive right in. And since this is Trains Are Awesome, we'll start with trains. Any discussion of Mexico City's transit system has to start with the metro. The 12 lines of the metro form the backbone of the entire system. In all of the Americas, only the New York subway is larger, though this network is substantially newer. The first line opened in 1969, and today, the network spans about 200 kilometers or 125 miles. You can pay for the metro using your integrated mobility card. A ride costs 5 pesos. Like I said, there are 12 lines, and most have numbers, 1 through 9, and 12. But there are also two lettered lines, A and B. These are slightly more oriented towards suburban commuters living in the state of Mexico. In terms of technology, most lines actually have trains that use rubber tires. Rubber tire trains have a number of advantages, like being able to accelerate and brake faster, and the ability to overcome steep grades easier. There are two exceptions, however, an A and Line 12, which just have regular steel wheels on steel rails. Line A is even more of an exception since it's technically light rail, not heavy rail. The Metro has a fascinating wayfinding system. Lines are of course color-coded, but each station also has its very own pictogram, corresponding to something in that area. This system was adopted to make the metro easy to navigate even for people who could not read. Besides the metro, the BRT, light rail, and cable cars in Mexico City also use pictograms. And I have to say, I really did find it quite helpful. But beware, the Mexico City metro can get very crowded. As somebody who grew up in Tokyo, the crowds were almost kind of nostalgic for me, but they can be overwhelming. The metro takes several steps to prevent the worst crushes. Some stations close their entrances, become exit only, other stations have gates, and some have these very twisty hallways that require you to walk quite some distance, all to manage the flow of people. A final fun fact before we move on, like in many cities around the world, the construction of the metro has led to many archaeological discoveries. In Mexico City, more than 20,000 artifacts have been discovered. Many are on display at metro stations, so you can look while you wait. There are several other trains in Mexico City. First, let's look at the Tren Ligero, the light rail. 
This 13 km or 8 mile line runs between Tasqueña Metro Station and Xochimilco. You can pay for the light rail using your integrated mobility card and a ride costs just 3 pesos. Mexico City used to have a large tram network, but much of it was ripped up in the 1970s as the metro was built. However, the line to Xochimilco was separated from car traffic and so it was spared. In the 1980s, it received a full renovation, converting it into a more modern light rail system. Today, it has 18 stations and is a great way to reach certain destinations in the south of the city, like the Intercity bus station, the Aztec Arena, or the famous canals at Xochimilco. The light rail has recently introduced a new fleet of vehicles built by a Chinese company, CRRC, and they all carry this really smart-looking blue and black livery. Like the metro, each station has its own pictogram to help with wayfinding. Perhaps the train I was most excited to ride was El Insurgente. This is an electric interurban railway built completely from scratch. Construction started in 2014, and when completed, it will connect Observatorio Metro Station with the Santa Fe Business District in Mexico City and the cities of Lerma and Toluca in the state of Mexico. In September of 2023, the first section opened between Zinacantepec and Lerma. It was extended to Santa Fe in August of 2024, and it will likely reach Observatorio by December. You can pay for El Insurgente using your integrated mobility card. A ride costs 15 pesos for any trip within the state of Mexico, but 60 pesos if you travel to or from Santa Fe. The trains used on El Insurgente are built by Spanish company CAF and are very similar to the trains used as commuter trains in Europe. They run at a maximum speed of 160 kilometers per hour or 100 miles per hour. If you want to learn more about El Insurgente, you're in luck because this Saturday I will upload my trip report aboard this new train. You won't want to miss it, so subscribe to Trains Are Awesome. There's one more train we need to discuss, the Tren Suburbano. This is another train that connects Mexico City with the state of Mexico. The suburban train runs for 27 kilometers or 17 miles between Buena Vista Station in Mexico City and Cuautitlan Station. A second branch to the Felipe Angeles Airport is under construction. Trains run frequently every day of the week. The service is operated by CAF, the same company that built the trains for El Insurgente. Here's the thing though, you cannot use your integrated mobility card on this line. You have to purchase a separate fare card that can only be used for the suburban train. Fares on the Tren Suburbano are distance-based. Short trips cost 10 pesos and 50 cents, while longer trips cost 24 pesos and 50 cents. And with that, we've covered all the trains. Let's move on to buses now. And I'll start with a bus that you're most likely to interact with if you visit Mexico City, the Metrobus. Metrobus is a network of bus rapid transit lines that complements the metro system. It has been in operation since 2005. I know I like to knock on bus rapid transit a lot in this channel, but that's mostly because a lot of systems in the US just don't do it well. Metrobus? Now that's BRT done well. All routes run in dedicated lanes where they are not impeded by traffic. Service is highly frequent, and some routes even use double articulated buses or double deck buses to accommodate the large crowds. You can use your integrated mobility car to ride the Metrobus. A ride costs 6 pesos. The Metrobus routes are all a little bit different from each other. Some have stops on the side of the street and require onboard payment. Others have fully built out stations in the middle, with fare gates and barriers on the platforms. The buses that use these median stations are high floor buses. Like the metro and the light rail, each stop has its own pictogram for easy navigation. On top of the Metrobus system, there is another BRT system known as Mejibus. Mejibus is the BRT system operated by the state of Mexico rather than the city. There are four Mejibus lines, which similarly use dedicated lanes and high quality stations. All lines connect either to the metro or the Tren Suburbano. You cannot use your integrated mobility card to ride the Mejibus. Instead, you must use a fare card issued by the state of Mexico. These are available at the bus stop or at Mexicable cable car stations. A ride on Mejibus costs 9 pesos. Mexico City also has trolley buses. These are run by the same agency that runs the light rail. There are 11 lines, numbered 1 through 10 and 12. You can use your integrated mobility card to ride the trolley buses. A ride costs 4 pesos usually, but there are some lines where it costs 7 pesos. 
From what I can tell, the trolley buses are kind of a second BRT system, but just powered with overhead wires. Many routes also run in dedicated lanes, and Line 10 is especially impressive because it uses an exclusive elevated right-of-way, complete with full-size stations. Regular bus service in Mexico City is known as RTP. These lime green buses run all across the city, though in my experience, you usually don't see them as much in areas where the Metrobús runs. You can use your integrated mobility card to ride RTP, but do watch out, the fares depend on what type of bus you're riding. Ordinary buses cost 2 pesos, express buses cost 4 pesos, the Ecobús routes cost 5 pesos, and overnight routes are 7 pesos. RTP used to have special women-only buses, known as Atenea, to provide a safer ride for women. Unfortunately, while some of the pink-colored buses remain in operation, the program was phased out in the pandemic. Now there are only mixed-gender buses. It's important to note that the Metro does still run women-only cars. There's one more bus we need to cover, the Pesero. Originally named so because the fare was just one peso, these are microbuses that move the overwhelming majority of people in Mexico City. Up to 60% of all passengers use peseros to travel around the city. Sources disagree about when they first showed up, but these microbuses are privately owned. The drivers must reach a daily quota in fare collection and may then keep the rest of the day's profits. They are kind of like taxis because you can hail them anywhere, preferably on a street corner, However, they're also like buses because they only run on fixed routes. And to get off, you have to request a stop. Many guides that I read advised us not to ride the peseros, claiming that the fierce competition between drivers leads to dangerous driving. We tried it anyways and found it to be one of the coolest experiences of the whole trip. And we knew that it might be our last chance to ride one. The city government has been trying to regulate peseros for a while now. The traditional microbuses are green, but the city is gradually scrapping them and replacing them with these purple buses. If somebody knows more about this process, please let me know in the comments. But from what I understand, by next year, the green peseros could be history, completely replaced by more regulated purple buses. A ride in a pesero costs between 6 and 8 pesos, depending on distance. In the traditional buses, fares are paid in cash only. However, I believe that the purple buses do have readers for the integrated mobility card. Before we move on to the last section, I just wanted to briefly mention that Mexico City has a bike share program known as Ecobici, which you can pay for with your integrated mobility card. Finally, the absolute best part of Mexico City transit, the cable cars. Well, technically they are aerial gondolas, but these cable hauled capsules have greatly improved transit equity in the more mountainous parts of the city. The city-run system is known as Cablebus. There are currently two lines open with a third one under construction. If there's only one thing you do in Mexico City, let it be riding the cable bus. You board the cable cars in modern stations, and once you're seated, you glide quietly over the endless colorful neighborhoods. It is a surreal experience and a video that I cannot wait to share with you guys. You can ride the Cablebus using your integrated mobility card, and a ride costs 7 pesos. Stations here also have their own pictograms. Some routes do require transferring mid-ride, and don't be surprised if staff asks you to change where you are sitting to distribute the weight better. Then, hold on as the pod rushes out of the station and admire the view. For those of you who just cannot get enough of the cable cars, like me, you're in luck. Mexico City has a whole second network of cable cars, known as the Mexicable. These are operated by the state of Mexico, Line 2 connects with the Metro on one end, and Mexicable Line 1 on the other end, and Line 1 in turn connects to the Mexibus BRT routes. The views on this system are equally impressive and give you a good feel for how sprawled out this mega region really is. You cannot pay for the fares here using your integrated mobility card, but you can use the same card as on the Mexibus. A ride costs 9 pesos. As a bonus, a lot of Mexicable stations have bakeries or ice cream shops inside the stations. Okay, that was a lot of information to process. Mexico City's transit network is so vast and expansive, and it's wild to think that most of it was built in just the last few decades. Remember, each system mentioned today will get its own dedicated, detailed video over the next few months. I cannot wait to start sharing them with you, and when you watch them, 
Remember, you can always come back to this video to see how they fit within the greater Mexican transit system. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome. We'll see you next time.